This is our sixth officials training module ahead of the National Flag Football Championships. This one will cover four-person officiating and the philosophy of man, zone, and ball. So let's talk about our basic initial positions. We'll start with the referee. Uh, the referee should be on the same side of the field as the field judge, opposite the line judge and back judge, in an initial position that's seven and seven, seven yards behind and seven yards wide of the deepest offensive back, with the body position at 45 degrees to look back toward the snapper and, and, the, and the player receiving the snap. Uh, also needs to be in a position to see the snap itself, the backs and players near the snapper. Also, there could be the potential to have to call a false start, especially in players in the immediate vicinity of the snapper. As the line judge, your initial position is going to be uh, between the neutral zone on the sideline opposite the referee and field judge and on the same side of the field as the back judge. Um, if wide receivers line up very close to the ball, or very close to the sideline rather, your initial position will be two, up to two yards off the sideline so you can get a good angle to see potential players stepping on the sideline. You're the official that's primarily going to be responsible for entering and exiting substitutes off of your side. Do they make it across the neutral zone appropriately and do they get into position correctly? Uh, that'll be your decision. If a down box is used, it's going to be operated under your supervision uh, on your sideline at the line to gain. Uh, but you're primarily going to be responsible um, for encroachments, false starts, illegal snaps, formation problems, shifts, and motion. Any player in motion at the snap by A is your responsibility. The field judge will line up in an initial position on the same side of the field as the referee and opposite the line judge and back judge, approximately 10 yards uh, off the scrimmage line most plays. We'll talk about specific changes to that on third and fourth down specifically uh, here in a minute. Again, with a 45-degree angle body position back toward the, back toward the spot of the snap, um, that you will also be responsible for substitutes coming in and out on your side of the field. You won't have a very good angle as to whether or not uh, which side of the neutral zone they're on, but you will know if they get off in time if they were trying to leave the field. And then the back judge's initial position is 20 yards downfield uh, on, the same, on the hash on the side of the field with the line judge and opposite the referee and the field judge. Back judge, remember your responsibilities include the game clock, uh, and, and then you've got some responsibilities down the field uh, that relate to the defensive team, primarily, pre-snap. On third and fourth down, there are no real changes for the referee, line judge, and back judge. The big difference here is that the field judge, if the line to gain is less than 10 yards downfield, your initial position will be at the line to gain, and you'll hold the line to gain until the ball crosses. When we talk about play coverage here in a, in a couple of slides, you'll see that the field judge generally gives ground most of the time, but in a situation where you're third and fourth down and the zone line to gain is in play, you're going to stop at the zone line to gain and, and make sure you make the determination as to whether or not the ball crosses. Remember also, and this is applicable on all downs, that the referee and the line judge count team A or team K, uh, and the field judge and the back judge count team B or team R. So let's talk about our initial keys. And we say initial keys because you're not going to stay with these players all the way throughout the down, but you're certainly going to have focus on them at the beginning of the play uh, to make sure that they're, they're, there, is no, there are no issues related to their releasing off the line of scrimmage, blocking, things like that uh, immediately after the snap. Probably not going to stay with your keys in most cases beyond a second or two before we need to go to zone. And we'll talk about zone here in a minute. But basically speaking, the referee has backs, the, the quarterback, and then action of the, the snapper or any blockers. The line judge also has responsibility uh, after the snap for the, for the blocking player, the snapper, and the players in the immediate vicinity of the snapper, especially those that might stay in to block. The back judge is going to pick up responsibility for the wide receivers on the line judge's side of the formation, and then the field judge is going to have responsibility uh, on the field judge's side of the formation for those wide receivers. Now, since most, play, most officials will have multiple players to watch, we have to start thinking about prioritization of keys. And as a general rule, uh, the, your priority should be on the players who run the, the, the quickest risk of coming into contact with defensive players. So if you look at the formation outlined here, uh, of the two keys that the back judge is, is focusing on, more focus should be given to the inside player because the defender is much closer and, could, and they'll have immediate interaction after the snap. For the field judge, 
the player closest to the field, the receiver closest to the field judge is the one that is immediately threatened, whereas the inside receiver, that, that defensive player is playing off a little bit. So that would mean if I were in the field judge position, I would give him a little bit more focus to the wide, wide receiver on this play just for a little bit longer because they're going to be immediately on the defense right after the snap. Doesn't mean I'm not going to pay attention to my, to my, other, my other keys, but I'm going to have to give more focus uh, to the players on the inside. So now let's talk a little bit about zones of responsibility. Uh, we'll start overlaying some things, not going to give a lot of focus to the referee because the referee is so often responsible for the ball when it's in the backfield <clears> that that's generally the, the referee's primary responsibility. We'll start with the line judge. The line judge has the sideline uh, immediately adjacent to him, or him or her approximately three to five yards in bounds, and then that kind of lane over the middle uh, right behind to, to maybe three to five yards beyond the neutral zone. That's the, the primary zone of responsibility for the line judge following the snap and as the play develops. The field judge is going to be responsible for the sideline on their side of the formation, as well as kind of the near third uh, as it relates to them slightly inside the hash all the way to the sideline and going back toward the corner of the end zone. And then the back judge kind of has the rest the rest of the field. There are areas of overlap, obviously, that will be in situations as we talk about some play coverages here in a few minutes. Um, there are areas where we might have multiple officials looking at action, especially if there's nothing going on in their zone or the, once the ball's in the air. But these are kind of good outlines and guidelines for who is responsible for what uh, as, the play, as the play begins and starts to develop. I mentioned previously our man into zone philosophy, and here again I'm going to outline with our keys here, and I'm going to give special special emphasis to where the focus of the back judge and the field judge would be more immediate at the snap here with the circles. So you'll notice that this is what we're looking at at the snap, um, but as the play develops and the threats start to dissipate, then we'll shift into zone coverage, and you saw the overlays before. So as the plays develop, and I'll put a full play in motion here in a second, as the plays develop, we're going to move off of our, our man coverage into zone coverage. And that allows us to, to find additional threats, find the ball, and, and start to turn our focus into the area of action on the play. So here's an example play. I've removed the defense um, for the purposes of making animation easier and hopefully to, to try to illustrate a point a little bit better. So <clears throat> We, our officials are in their basic, or their basic position. We have a snap. We're going to have a lot of different routes run by players. So on the on the line judge's side of the formation, uh, the the widest receiver runs kind of a post pattern. Uh, the snapper and the the inside receiver to the line judge side both kind of flood to the to the flat. Um, the receivers on the field judge's side, uh, one of them runs kind of a crossing route on the inside, and we have a deeper a deeper crossing route as well. So you'll also notice as those plays develop that our officials did their job. The field, ju the back judge and field judge give ground. The back judge is going to retreat with the play no farther than the goal line unless the pass got thrown into the end zone. And then the back judge would have responsibility if they felt like the end line were threatened to get to the end line to cover it. Field judge is also going to try to remain ahead of the play, but they're only going to lead that play as far as the goal line. The line judge, after the initial threat clears, is going to is going to move three to five yards down the field. So you'll see here as the routes have kind of developed that the field judge's zone is empty. And when the zone is empty, we've got to go find something to officiate. So if I were the field judge, I would be expanding my field of vision, probably looking primarily at the widest receiver, this player that started in the widest position towards me, because that's the player closest to me, and I can really assist with that, whereas the back judge may, have, may draw additional attention to the player that ran that post, uh, from the widest side of the formation on their side. The line judge obviously has three players kind of coming at them directly within about 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. So that's going to draw the line judge's focus as well into, into his or her zone. But once that pass is thrown, everybody's focus is going to shift in the area of where the ball was. And everybody's going to see different parts of this. Uh, obviously, ideally, we'll look for space between players because that's where action will generally occur, and we want to be in position to see that. But let's say that pass gets thrown uh, – to the player at about the 16-yard line over the middle. That's going to draw attention, a lot of attention from the back judge and the field judge as they shift their focus there. The line judge will kind of be looking through some players, uh, but if that pass is caught, then the line judge is going to have to react and move up to potentially have to get the spot. So you can see here there's a lot of different things going on during a play that officials have to, that officials have to check through, and they'll have to constantly have their head on a swivel, especially when we move into zone coverage, so that they can really pick up everything about a play that that is, that is relevant. 
Some important points to remember about all these, these items we talked about before. Make sure your initial keys get a free release off of the line of scrimmage. If they're, if they're pressed, we need to stay a little longer with the key till the threat dissipates. Uh, once those initial threats clear, we'll switch to zone. Usually that's going to take less than two seconds. The closer we are to B's goal line, the longer we might stay with a threat or a potential man situation to make sure that we're picking everything up we need to. Uh, threats for offensive pass interference on pick plays become become kind of heightened the closer to the goal line we get or even potentially on third or fourth down in the vicinity of the zone line to gain. We'll extend our zone if there's nobody in it and also once the pass is in the air because we're going to go find the ball. We need to find where the ball's going. We're not watching the ball in flight. We're trying to figure out where the pass is going and the players will often tell you where the pass is going through their actions. If we're ball watching, we're not watching players and the ball is not going to foul anybody. So we need to adjust our focus to that part. And then once the catch is made, we need to resume our normal duties. Picking up the runner and if I'm the back judge and probably the field judge, I'll have blocks ahead of or behind the runner as I'm looking through. The referee, once they see that the threat to the quarterback is passed, they'll start to turn up field and, and find things to officiate. We want to officiate potential threats and matchups when two opponents or multiple opponents are in, are in close proximity to each other. That draws our attention. That needs to be officiated. One player standing off by themselves generally does not require as much attention for us. So hopefully if you can put all those things to remember in addition to the keys and initial positions, we should be in a pretty good, uh, pretty good position to properly officiate most of our plays. I hope you found this module relating to the man's own ball philosophy of four-person officiating helpful. I uh, hope you have a great tournament.